This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. Chippewa County Administrator Randy Scholes has announced that he will be retiring in March. In a press release, Scholes announced his plans to retire effective March 7th, vowing to support a smooth transition for his eventual replacement over the next few months. Scholes had served as the county administrator since February of 2018. In his statement, Scholes thanked Chippewa County staffers for their hard work and highlighted efforts to maintain one of the lowest tax rates in the state. He also said he's excited to watch the community continue to flourish. As Chippewa Falls officials put the final touches on this year's Irvine Park Christmas Village, the woman who destroyed part of the display last year has been sentenced to probation. 33-year-old Ebony Hudson of Tennessee was found competent to stand trial last week and entered a no-contest plea to recklessly endangering safety on Tuesday. Hudson drove through the display last December, also ramming her vehicle into a Parks Department truck. City officials say this year's display is on track to open on Thanksgiving night as usual. The school district of Kadat broke ground on renovations and a new technical education center on Tuesday. The funding for the project was provided by a $9 million referendum approved by residents in 2023. When complete, the project will add nearly 30,000 square feet to the high school and middle school while updating the entrance for added security. Funding from the referendum will also be used for an expanded athletic facility and three new classrooms. School officials thanked the community for providing the referendum funding. Wisconsin State Assembly Speaker Robin Voss was re-elected to the position by a smaller Republican majority on Tuesday. Speaker Voss has now held the position longer than anyone in state history, but faced challenges to his re-election bid with new district maps across the state this year. In addition to losing the near-Republican supermajority with the new maps, Voss faced calls for a change from members of his own party due to past conflicts with President-elect Donald Trump. The Republican majority in the Assembly dropped by about 10 seats. Republican Senate candidate Eric Hovde has yet to concede the race to Senator Tammy Baldwin a week after the election. In a social media post on Tuesday, Hovde said he was gathering more information to decide whether to request a recount in the razor-thin election and questioned what he called voting inconsistencies. During an interview following the post, Hovde admitted that he lost but still did not concede the race. The Milwaukee Election Commission later put out a statement unequivocally refuting Hovde's, quote, baseless claims. Officials from the Wisconsin Department of Justice's Office of School Safety say they've seen a massive uptick in the use of the Speak Up, Speak Out tip line. According to their annual report, the tip line received over 5,200 tips during the last school year, marking a 40% increase from the previous year. Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call says the tip line helps students address safety concerns to allow them to focus on learning in class. According to the report, bullying has typically been the most common reported tip since the program's launch. The arraignment of Shane Helmbrecht, who was charged with killing his neighbor Jen Ward in Eau Claire in 2016, has been postponed. Helmbrecht had originally been found incompetent to stand trial and was ordered to live in a halfway house, which he left last year. After being taken back into custody, he was extradited back to Wisconsin and was deemed competent to stand trial in September after more delays. Tuesday's arraignment was postponed because his defense attorney requested an appeal of the ruling in his latest competency hearing. Oak Leaf Clinics officially opened another urgent care facility in Eau Claire on Tuesday. The new clinic is located on West Oakwood Mall Drive on the south side of the city with a focus on patients who need immediate care but are not in life-threatening condition. It will be open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. The organization has opened a number of clinics in the Chippewa Valley in recent months, hoping to fill the gaps in care left behind by the departure of HSHS from the region earlier this year. The National Park Service will hold four public meetings this month to gather public input on the comprehensive river management plan of the St. Croix National Scenic Riverway. The first two meetings will take place in Spooner and Hayward on November 20th, and the other two will be held on November 21st in St. Croix Falls and Stillwater, Minnesota. The organization's river management plan focuses on resource management, visitor experiences, and preservation efforts. Residents can also submit comments on the plan online through the end of the year. 
Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers has declared next week as Winter Weather Awareness Week in the state. According to a press release from Wisconsin Emergency Management, the designation is meant to remind residents that winter weather can cause dangerous conditions and they should begin preparing for those cold months now. DHS officials say there were dozens of cold-related deaths last winter, as well as hundreds of emergency room visits and hospitalizations. Residents should make their plans and gather essential emergency supplies now. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Bucks beat the Raptors. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports NBA. The Bucks with a 99 to 85 win over the Toronto Raptors at Pfizer Forum. What made the difference? Doc Rivers. One of the things we've been harping on is getting to the paint, create more threes. Well, shot 56 of them today, and 50 of them were great shots. We just didn't shoot them well. But man, if we play like that every night and get those shots, we're going to be fine. The Bucks host the Pistons tonight. NFL, the Packers getting ready to face the Bears Sunday. Linebacker J.J. Enigbari on what it was like last week, learning the team had traded Preston Smith to the Steelers. We've been here all my three years here, and uh, pretty much was a big part of my success and uh, growth as a player and uh, partly as a man and as a teammate. So um, losing him is definitely uh, pretty much hit us close to the heart. College football, the the Badgers with three games remaining, starting with Oregon Saturday night. The number one team in the country coming in, you know, with an incredible opportunity in front of us. You know, it, it's going to be a challenge. I think that's the, the thing that we got to make sure we stay focused on. That's Badgers head coach Luke Fickle with Sports on Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Dwayne Johnson has his quirks, but he might be booking himself too tight. According to Deadline, the star of Red One confirmed rumors that he was often late to the set and held a production from time to time. Director Jake Kasdan and co-star Chris Evans say it was no big deal because it is expected and more or less written into Johnson's contract because he is a very busy guy. The Rock also admitted to peeing into water bottles to save time. Word to the wise, if you are working on a set on a Dwayne Johnson film, bring a book to read and keep your water on your person. More Gail Godot? Yes, please. The actress will star in a film called The Runner from Amazon MGM Studios. The thriller is set in London where Godot's character, a lawyer, attempts to rescue her abducted son while getting clues and cryptic messages from a mysterious caller. Sounds fun. The project is in the early stages of development with no release date set. Beyonce might have been disappointed with her response from the Country Music Awards, but when it comes to Grammy nominations, she's at the top. Variety reports that Beyonce has been nominated for 11 Grammys, including Artist, Song, and Album of the Year for Cowboy Carter. Not far behind are some other heavy hitters, including, you guessed it, Taylor Swift, Serena Carpenter, Billie Eilish, and new kid on the block, Chapel Roan. Roan and Carpenter also up for Best New Artist of the Year. Looks like I got shut out again. Taylor Sheridan apparently decided he does not have enough shows on TV, so he is teaming up with Blake Shelton for a new music reality show. The Road will follow a big-time music star around the country in search of the next big musical talent. Deadline reports competing artists will have the opportunity to open for an A-lister in various towns to win over crowds. The music superstar who will lead the search has not yet been revealed. The Road will launch in the fall of 2025 on CBS. The announcement seems like only a matter of time, but there will be a sequel to the prequel known as Wonka. The 2023 film starring Timothy Chalamet was one of the top 10 highest grossing films of 2023, so the announcement was more a question of when, not if. Director Paul King says the script is in the early stages and will take place before Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and he might incorporate some exotic locations where they have to search for secret ingredients. The film Tremors from 1990 is getting a reboot. The team behind the horror flick, which was at times pretty funny, has reacquired the rights to their script and are contemplating how to approach another crack at the franchise, according to JoeBlow.com. Yes, that's a real sight. The original film took place in a small Nevada town that saw residents terrified of graboids. Kevin Bacon, who was in the original, has shown interest in the sequel. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Cloudy today with scattered rain developing later this afternoon into this evening. Uh, around a tenth of an inch or less of rain possible by the time it's done. Our high in the upper 40s. It will be breezy this morning, but the wind will die down later this afternoon. Tonight, rain ending 40. Tomorrow, partly to mostly cloudy with a high near 50. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Current temp now 37. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WCFW.FM or thetap.fm. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. 
Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 